good day my lovelies today I wanted to share one of my favorite things with all of you and that is in general vintage cookbooks I, I love cooking now I am NOT a chef I want to make that disclaimer off the top I am NOT a chef I am a home cook and someone who grew up cooking with my mom and my grandma as often as I could on that note I want to share with you something that's very very special to me and that is this book. Uh, it's The Joy of Cooking, a very traditional old cookbook, uh, but this in particular was my mother's. She got this on her wedding day from her mother. And let me see, can I, <laughs> how close do I need to get for you to be able to really see this? But this, I believe, is a 1961 version of The Joy of Cooking. And my mother obviously used it a lot because it's um, quite falling apart in places, especially the, the dust cover, but it's full of really interesting old recipes. Now, in particular, I'm really interested in recipes that have kind of fallen out of fashion, things we don't really do anymore, and a lot of them involve jello or gelatin. And just starting to look at some of what they call molded salads. Uh, some of them sound really great. Some of them sound interesting. Others you go, I wouldn't want to try that. But now I kind of do want to try that. <laughs> so we're going to go on a little explorative journey today. We're going to make three of these sort of unusual gelatin salads. Now I've picked three in increasing order of what I would call weirdness, or weirdness to my modern brain. The first one, which is maybe a, a little lower on the weird scale, is called Golden Glow Gelatin Salad. Uh, the next one I want to do is a vegetable gelatin salad. Oh yes. And then, then we're gonna get really weird. Then we're gonna do the molded cream fish. And that, it, it, it's exactly what it sounds like. It, you're basically making somewhat of a creamy sauce with butter and flour and Worcestershire sauce, and then you're taking fish and you're layering it. So it's, it's sort of like, think of it as fish parfait. Fish parfait, yeah, I just said that. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make fish parfait today. So join me, won't you, in exploring some of these unique vintage dishes. So behold, all of the ingredients that we are going to use for our three gelatin salads today. And um, yeah, there's gonna be some prepping, chopping, mixing, blending, all of the above. So let's get right to it. So here we go, prepping all of the ingredients we're going to need for our three gelatin salads. And most of this prep involves a lot of chopping and dicing up of vegetables. And most of these vegetables are going to be for the vegetable gelatin salad. Included in the list are celery, carrots, green peppers, radishes, and cucumbers. This also involves grating an onion which of course made me cry like a little baby. So now that I've got all of my ingredients prepped, I'm going to start on the Golden Glow Gelatin. So this is going to consist of carrots and chopped pecans and pineapple in a lemon jello, but I'm gonna use part the uh, liquid drained off the crushed pineapple in order to make the liquid that I dissolved the gelatin in. And I got really lucky this time because I, I the can yielded exactly the right amount of liquid. <laughs> I don't know how you get that lucky. But let's begin, shall we? So I have my pot to boil my liquids and I have my gelatin and I have my Perfect one cup of pineapple juice from the can. Super lucky day. Here's hoping I don't screw any of this up. <laughs> 
So let's go ahead and begin boiling. This is gonna go pretty fast, I think, because honestly, it's not a lot of liquid. I also have some ice water. Now this is important because I want this to set pretty quickly. So the recipe says to let the gelatin start to set and then you put the stuff in. And if I use ice water and combine it with the pineapple and, and the dissolved gelatin, it, it will go faster. It will set up a little quicker. So here's hoping that works out well. I also have my crushed pineapple over here and my shredded carrots and chopped pecans right over here. Now, what I'm going to be using to make this is this lovely bundt pan. I, uh, it, this is supposed to be eight to 10 servings and I decided not to cut it in half. So this should be okay, <clears throat> I think. I think it's eight to 10 servings because of all the stuff that goes in it, but you know. Well, I guess we'll see how this works out. So, now we wait for this to come to the boil. Okay, our pineapple juice is boiling. So I am going to take my lemon gelatin, shut that heat off so I don't boil it too much, and I'm going to dissolve that somewhere. Dissolve the lemon gel. Oh my gosh, that smells lovely. I wish you could smell this, but it, oh, and it's dissolving very, very quickly. So here's my strategy. I'm going to put this in back in this container that I had the pineapple juice in. And I'm going to add the ice water until it reaches at least two cups. This is Pyrex glass now, and Pyrex is actually also used in laboratories, and it's very heat stable. We don't want bottoms of glass vessels breaking off. Trust me, uh, I've been there, and it is not fun. Don't boil things in jars. It's not cool. So, here we go. <laughs> I'll confess myself just a little bit nervous about this, but going to pour this in. Ah, and there's ice going to go in, but it needs to be a little over two cups, but so this should allow this to set fairly quickly. And then what the recipe says is when it is nearly set, you put all the stuff in and put it in a mold. <laughs> it feels like a tall order. I Alright, that's like a tall order just because that's a lot of things to do very quickly and it's hard to know when gelatin is nearly set. <laughs> that it, You're supposed to chill it until it's quote unquote nearly set, so this could be really interesting. I think we are nearly there. Nearly there. So set this aside for a moment. Let me get my bun pan. Now, again, fairly simple pan, very common. But hopefully, this will be a good size. I'm going to, in the interest of aesthetic, some of the ingredients into the pan uh, before I put the jello in. I just realized you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry about that. Okay. So now. Okay. Two cups of shredded carrots. And a cup of our 
crushed pineapple, which is pretty much the entire can. Maybe this is a little more than I need, but that's okay. I like pineapple. <laughs> so, I'm gonna get this very nicely mixed. That is a very unusual color. <laughs> Look at that, it's so bright orange. Oh. All right, but the good news is there's so much ingredient in here I'm not worrying about it settling out. That was my, my biggest concern was that I would have layers of fruit and veggie and then a layer of gelatin on the top that didn't have anything in it. But apparently that really isn't going to be a problem. Or at least it appears that it is not going to be a problem. So, into our mold it goes. Okay. Ah, okay. Ah, cohesion. <laughs> Not working well for me. Okay, I lost a little bit of it off the side, but not very much. Okay, here we go. Well, that whole idea I had of um, having the pecans at the bottom, totally worthless because when I poured it in, they all displaced. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? It smells like cake. I know it sounds insane, but did your mother or grandmother, or even yourself, did you ever make pineapple upside down cake? Cause that's what this smells like. It smells incredible. <laughs> this might not be as weird as I thought. I might stand corrected here, but I, although we knew this was gonna be pretty good. I mean, all of these things are desserty or ingredients that seem like they would go with gelatin, but... Okay. <sighs> this one's ready to go in the fridge. And... Ah! This is what it looks like. Smells amazing. <sighs> Let's see what happens. So I'm going to take you through the vegetable gelatin salad making a little fast because it's pretty much exactly like the golden glow salad. There is our lemon gelatin dissolving and our bowl of diced vegetables. There's the diced or grated onion that made me cry earlier. Next I'm going to add some paprika and some salt. Two teaspoons of salt and about a teaspoon of paprika. Mixing those up very thoroughly. Now, I'll warn you, I'm not a big fan of some of the vegetables in this salad. I'm not a big radish fan, and I'm not a big celery fan. So I'm, I'm really trying hard to get past that during this prep, realizing that that could influence my liking of this salad. So in went my lemon gelatin. And into a, an individual ring mold, also known as a donut pan, the mixture goes. And it's ready for the fridge. Ah, now, I am incredibly excited to try these recipes. I'm, I'm still a little bit shocked about how good the pineapple and carrot and pecan and lemon jello smells. That makes me really excited to try it. Like, I'm... I can't wait. Uh, but unfortunately, I have run out of filming time today. So I will see you back here tomorrow when we get to do recipe three, fish jello. Never thought I'd hear myself say that. But here we are. It's tomorrow. Welcome back. Today we're going to do the most strange of the three dishes, and that is the gelatinized seafood salad. Um, I already prepped some things for us this morning. I got all my ingredients out early so that they're all at room temperature. Hopefully that'll make this um, emulsion sauce go well. Uh, they can be kind of intimidating because they can break or start to separate. And emulsion sauces, in case you're unaware, are sauces that involve things that are fatty and things that are water-based. 
and they are they come together because of the use of egg yolks, which act as um, surfactants, I guess you could say. And that's what we're going to do today, like hollandaise. Hollandaise is our um, emulsions. But hopefully this will go well. There's a few little concerns I have, and I'll share those when I get there. But to begin, <laughs> I, the instructions call for a double boiler, or that is pot of boiling water with metal bowl on top, which I need to whisk, and I, that's the one thing I forgot. <laughs> of course I forgot my whisk, naturally, because you have to whisk these very carefully. So, now I'm ready for this. <laughs> All right, so essentially, uh, the first part of the recipe calls for soaking three quarters of a tablespoon of gelatin in two tablespoons of water, uh, which I've already done. And then it just says, put everything else in the double boiler. And I feel like there's a proper order and a proper way to do this. Um, I think I'm just going to go in the order that it says. But I might make one exception, and that is the butter. Butter is going to go in first and kind of get melted. Because as you can probably tell, my double boiler is going crazy right now. And this isn't even on full high heat. This is on sort of medium heat. And <laughs> it, if you don't do this quickly, keep whisking. You do it right and you kind of have all of your things in place, your mise en place correct. You can find yourself in a situation where you end up scrambling your eggs instead of make, making a nice smooth sauce. I'm a little scared. <laughs> but we're gonna see if this works. And that's the other thing about this particular cookbook. It doesn't actually warn you. So if you are a cook that is a home cook that has never made this kind of sauce using egg yolks and butter and other seasonings and flour and what have you, and you don't know you have to whisk constantly in order to keep this thing going, you might find yourself in a situation where you make scrambled eggs. So I'm a, <laughs> that's maybe a, a minus one for the, uh, for the vintage cookbook. But I'm trying to really, really give this some serious consideration and give myself the best chance of not making scrambled eggs. Now, once again, I'm gonna take you through this process kind of fast because, well, that way you don't have to sit around watching me just whisk for 10 minutes. So the first thing that goes in are the egg yolks, which of course emulsify all the different ingredients together. Then after that, went in a little bit of flour, salt, and sugar. And once again, the constant whisking is so that you don't get scrambled eggs at the bottom of the bowl. If they sit too long, they can in fact scramble at the bottom, even, even if they're a little bit better emulsified. Now, the next thing to go in is either milk or tomato sauce, but well, I like a nice creamy sauce and well, I had the milk on hand. Still looking like a nice creamy sauce, not scrambled eggs yet. Now you really wanna have your mise en place together for these types of sauces, because you do have to constantly whisk. I'm starting to realize now that I didn't do that. <laughs> so I'm measuring out other things and trying to get back to whisking as fast as I can. In goes a little Worcestershire sauce. And either mustard powder or curry powder. Now I love curry, so I went ahead and used curry for this. I also put in some grated onion, a little bit of red pepper, and some lemon juice. This was the one that really scared me. Mostly because, well, milk and lemon juice, they don't like each other very much. If you've ever put the two together, the acid tends to curdle the milk. And I didn't want that, but spoiler alert, that did not end up happening. So that's good news.
And then in goes the gelatin. Oh, I need to take this off. And be back. Now I can finally show you what we've made. The, the camera isn't really doing it justice at the moment, but it looks like hollandaise. It, it looks like a very beautiful hollandaise sauce and it smells like the best curry you've ever had. So now, again, we need to, now we need to let this set, let it rest until it's no longer so hot and we can start to work with it and put it with our fish. So needless to say, uh, I will probably let this sit for 10 minutes or so, maybe longer, depending on how much time it takes for this much liquid to cool. And I will see you after it's cool. So it has been about 15, 20 minutes and our sauce, which I've poured into another container, is beginning to set. It's looking more gelatinous, you could say. It's not so runny. And I have my fish which is some wonderful smoked salmon. My husband and I make this ourselves and it is delicious. They say if you make recipes with really good ingredients, nothing can go wrong. So let's hope that's the truth. <laughs> um, all of the ingredients were good and this is some of the best fish I've ever had. So I feel like we're giving this the very best chances of being something really good. Now, this recipe, which by the way is not called jello fish or gelatinized fish, it's actually called molded creamed fish. Just uh, for that correction. It instructs you to use, you can use part fish or part chopped celery. I'm just gonna use fish. And when the gelatin is nearly set, place part of it in the bottom of an oiled ring mold. That's a little bit of a problem. I've already used all my ring molds. Those are all the ring molds I had. I used them yesterday, so I don't have another ring mold. But what I do have <laughs> are wine glasses. Now, the reason why I think this is a good alternative is because the instructions actually say, uh, when it's nearly set, Place part of it in the bottom of a ring mold, add the fish, then add more gelatin, and repeat until all the ingredients are gone, basically. So it's essentially a parfait. If it's in a glass like this, we can see it. So the aesthetic will be there with these wine glasses, and I think they'll make a good substitute for the ring mold that I don't have. So, two of these. Here we go. I have it in my lovely uh, measuring cup that has a little spout on it. So I'm just gonna pour. It doesn't actually say how much of this to put in either. It just says some, put some in. So I'm assuming we can ad lib a little bit on how many layers we want. And some fish. And again, a layer of salmon. Okay, there they are, that's it. <laughs> These are going in the fridge now. And I'm gonna give them an hour or two to set. Um, yeah, see you back here in an hour or so. So here we are, taste time. We've got our three beautiful gelatin salads, vintage gelatin salads. We've got the Golden Glow gelatin salad. We've got the molded vegetable gelatin salad and the molded creamed fish. Um, all of these say, ordinarily, if you were going to serve this to your guests, you would present them in a very dainty or picturesque way. Uh, this one specifically says you're supposed to unmold it on lettuce. I didn't do that. 
to be honest, I don't actually have a head of lettuce with big pretty leaves and I have shredded lettuce in my fridge, but I don't judge. But I, I'm not going to unmold these on specific things because I haven't tasted them so I wouldn't serve them to guests anyway. Uh, but obviously if you were going to serve a dinner party, these at a dinner party, you, you would want to make them look prettier than I've done. So the molded gelatin uh, with pineapple pecans on one side and carrots. <laughs> the pineapple and the carrots are a little more distributed, but let's try this. First we'll do no pecans and then we'll put pecans. And yeah, I am just gonna eat right off of this because I have a feeling my family won't wanna try this, but I do. Woo, that's tangy. That is actually really good. The carrots, the carrots were for me the weirdest part. I mean, the, the fruit and nuts made sense for a dessert, certainly for a dessert, but um, uh, the carrots don't really, they don't overpower the flavor. Y you don't really get carrots. It's more like carrots. <laughs> and they, they have a, a, a sweet taste and a nice crunch. Like they're more textural and I, I'm gonna do more pecans over here now. <laughs> Just to see how much pecan would you like to have in your mold, but... Hmm. Hmm. That side has a lot of pecans. Wow. But yeah. This is alright. Next time, obviously, I would mix everything in together. Which is what the book says to do. <laughs> My bad. Hmm. Honestly, you could even leave the pecans out. Or you could change this to walnuts. Heck, maybe you could even do this with, um, you probably, I don't see any mention of pistachio anything in this book. I mean, maybe I didn't look hard enough, but you could probably do uh, pistachios and the pineapple, I mean, even pistachio, I don't think, do they make pistachio jello? I know they make pudding. Oh well. Whatever. This combination of like a sweet vegetable, a fruit, and a nut, this works. Oh yeah. It's nice. Okay. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> the book has a very interesting recommendation. It recommends to serve it with mayonnaise. Now, sometimes this book is kind of vague. Like when I was making the hollandaise, it was a little vague and it didn't tell you which ingredient to add. It did not specifically say to whisk constantly. And it does not at all say how you're supposed to serve it with mayonnaise. I mean, are you supposed to glop it all on? Are you just supposed to dip and then eat it with a little mayonnaise? I've got a little mayonnaise right here. <laughs> oh boy. I'm going to do a little mayonnaise. I, cause I'm, I'm honest to God, not sure about this, but we're gonna try it. Hmm. Ooh, again with the tang, wow. Not as weird as I thought it was gonna be. Hmm. That's the biggest surprise of the day right there, that mayonnaise could go on top of a dessert like this, or a dessert, or a salad. I, I'm thinking of it as a dessert, but strictly speaking, yeah, I suppose it is supposed to be served like a salad. So, uh-huh, okay. Fine, yes, I'll think again. <laughs> mayonnaise on jello salad. Okay. And on that note, let's switch these. What I have in front of me now is the 
molded vegetable gelatin salad. So, little one. This has carrots, radishes, celery, and uh, green pepper and cucumbers, and in lemon jello. And this also is supposed to be served with mayonnaise. Let's see, what does it say anything else? It just says, again, to unmold it on watercress or lettuce and serve it with mayonnaise. Or boiled salad dressing, whatever that is. But we're gonna go with mayonnaise because I didn't make boiled salad dressing. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Somehow, I, this is the one I'm the least looking forward to. Here we go. <laughs> now, disclaimer time. I made this according to what the book says. I did not doctor it to necessarily suit my particular tastes. I'm not a big radish fan. I'm not a big celery fan. So I'm really, really trying to get past that part. Oh yeah, and there's, woohoo, I'm getting the grated onion. The one that made me cry. The grated onion in here too. <clears throat> anyway, and it, yeah, you can really feel that. But this one I think can really benefit from the mayonnaise. <laughs> We're gonna put some mayonnaise on this one, baby. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that I wasn't that impressed with that first bite. It was just like mushy vegetables, <laughs> crunchy vegetables in a mushy matrix. <laughs> if you can believe. Ah, okay. <sighs> it's gonna be the weirdest mukbang you've ever seen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here we go. Hmm. Hmm. With the mayonnaise. A little better. <laughs> it almost reminds me of, you know when you go to sandwich shops and you get, you know, your cheese and your meat and then you get whatever vegetables you like and then dressing. If you could just somehow magically take the vegetables and the dressing out and only eat that, that's what that is. <laughs> so a nice vegetable medley um, in Jello. And by the way, this could have been, I think lemon or lime Jello. Consult the expert. Uh-huh. One package lemon or lime flavored gelatin. So it'd be interesting to play with that if, if you wanted to embark on this particular journey. But this, I would almost fill the, the little crater of this or the, of, you're gonna make this in a ring mold. Fill that crater with mayonnaise because it helps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I see mayonnaise um, won me over on this. That that made it for me. Now, when I said it made it for me, that was what made this um, enjoyable for me. I didn't really like the flavor of the vegetables with the texture of the jello. It was just strange for me. Um, but having said that, it's, uh, I like the, the, the flavors independently I like. And, and again, with the mayonnaise, it kind of tied it all together. So I wouldn't make this one again, but if, and again, and apologize to anyone who maybe it does enjoy a recipe similar to this and maybe still makes it with their families, but I don't think I would eat this again. Sorry. Let's move on to the fish, shall we? <clears throat> All right. So, molded creamed fish. 
think I finally figured I got the name down. Molded cream fish. So it's uh, smoked salmon that's been flaked and it's got that sauce of kind of hollandaise with curry. So this one, uh, I'm again, I'm more worried about this being a texture issue because I don't know if you can see that, but the, the gelatin really did kind of set up and I was hoping it would be more loosely set. It, it's not, it's more hard set. So, all right then, here we go. And you have to imagine this being in a mold like that one. <laughs> Okay, the flavor's great. Yes. A little salty. Again, I would back the salt off if I made this again, of the sauce. But yeah, and actually, the texture of the sauce isn't like the texture of actual jello. I think really it's, it just feels thick. It's just a thickening agent in this case. It's not gelatinous. It's just really, really thick. Wow. Hmm. I guess that maybe that's why I wanted to do these. I was really hoping to be surprised. And I gotta say, I am. Yeah. Wow. I did not predict my, I did not picture myself liking this. I, but I do. I like this and honestly you could just, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm probably not gonna serve it like this, that's a lot. <laughs> I'm going to just mix it up and make dip. Hold on a second. Okay. Crackers. That's normally how I eat this. I have a really great recipe for turning this salmon that we make into a really nice dip and it got mayonnaise and it's got cream cheese. All of these things. Maybe I just found a new recipe for dip. So I'm gonna bring this plate back so that I don't have to put on the table. I'm trying to be dainty and ladylike about this. Okay, here's what I'm gonna plan to do with these. I'm gonna take both of the glasses that I made and I'm gonna scoop them out, sorry. And I'm going to mix them up and I'm gonna make dip out of this. Because I, honestly, the salmon is too nice. I, I, I'm going to definitely eat this jello. I think it's delicious, the pineapple, the golden glow. And then I'm gonna dipify this. Let's try. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that works. Uh-huh. and surprising set of experiments. I came out of that with a whole different idea of what jello or salad were in the 1950s and 60s. So yeah, a lot of surprises, a lot of interesting learning experiences, and I hope that you've enjoyed watching me <laughs> play around with these interesting old-fashioned recipes and I am 10 out of 10 going to do more of these. I have quite the collection of cookbooks. Some people might even call it a problem. And I hope you'll stick around and come back for more of these little journeys 
because this w this is sort of giving me a, a wonderful reason to explore all the things that I've always been curious about. So thank you for joining me and I hope to see you right back here again soon. Bye.